some more basic ones. I mean, some more advanced ones. Did we do this one yesterday? Do you remember? No. Okay. This is, I think, yeah, the start of the advanced ones. So this isn't anything new. Just looking at some more advanced ones. Here we go. So we have paid close attention to the little details. You did well yesterday. Log the base B of the square root of x times by the cube root of y squared divided by z. Before we start doing this, just a reminder, we have our picture of our flower. There's the roots, the sun up here. So we know rational exponents work like this. Power's on top and roots are on bottom, right, everybody? So I'm going to first of all rewrite these as rational exponents. So what we have here is log to the base b of x to the what power? You tell me. One half. Very good. This is power one. Powers are on top. This is a square root. Roots are on bottom. One half. Questions on that? So then we have times y to the what power? Two thirds. Powers are on top. Roots, cube roots are on bottom. I'm going to ask you, do you have questions on that? Okay, divided by z. So everybody, I rewrote it with rational exponents. And now we can go ahead and split it up. I want to give myself some more room. Okay, so we'll split this up. So we have log to the base b of x to the 1 half power, and then 1. Good, plus, because of multiplication, plus log to the base b of y to the 2 thirds, very good, and then 1. Minus log to the base b of z. And then do we need to keep going? Yep, we grab our exponents, bring them down in front to be multiplied, Bring them down in front. Do I need to write that out? Or you guys understand what's going on? We all understand what's going on? Do I need to write it out? Okay, awesome. Okay, let's do a couple more. So we have log of the square root of xy squared over z cube roots of p. First things first, let's rewrite it with rational exponents. This one's a little bit trickier. So what we have here is log, and then is all this stuff under here under the root? Is it? Yes. So what we have is xy squared raised to the what power? Good, one half. Roots are on bottom, square root, powers are on top. Does everybody understand how I rewrote that? Are you sure? Do you have questions? Okay, all over z and then p to the what power? One third. Roots are on bottom, powers are on top. Are we all following? Okay, so then from there, let's look at this. Well, is there an addition sign in here? No. Is there a subtraction sign? No. So it would not be breaking the forbidden rule to use properties of excellence and simplify this further. So I'm going to write this, give myself some room here. So I'm going to rewrite this again. So we have log of, well, raise a power to a power and you, okay, so what's my power on x? One, right? One. So if we distribute that through and we multiply, that would be x to the one half. And then this would be distributed through. So we'll do two times one half. What is that? Is we're multiplying, right? Two times one half. Think about it, guys. Two times one half. What do you do when you multiply? You multiply straight across. Two over, which is? Now let's say you didn't know that. Use your calculator. Two times one half in your calculator and you get y to the first. So I'm just going to write y and I'm going to keep my parentheses off. Does everybody see how I simplify that top thing? Okay. And then we have over z p to the one third. All right. So then from there we'll split it up, rewrite it as one, I mean, uh, we'll split it up and write it as multiple laws. So we have log of x to the one half, and then what are we going to have? Plus minus what? Plus, we're multiplying. Are you guys following? I'm a little concerned. Plus log of y, and then what? Divide, right? Subtract log of z, and then is this on bottom being divided too? So it must be subtract, very good, log of p to the one-third. And then from there, we would fix our exponents. 
Ding. Ding. And I'm not going to finish. Are you all okay with that? Do you feel confident to try some of those more difficult ones along? Okay. So, do problems. 14, 15, 17, 19, 21, and this is on yesterday's worksheet. Um, advanced thinkers, you should try 16, 17, 18, and 20. So a lot of you are advanced thinkers in here. Push yourself to try those ones, check them with me. The worst thing that could happen is that you get them wrong, right? So everybody should try these, we're all advanced thinkers in here, but you are required to do these problems on the old worksheet. Okay, now note, guys, note one thing before you get started, if we have log, to the base 10, but it doesn't have a 10. It goes without being said that a 10 is there. We have log of 6x. Is 6 connected to x? Yes, by a multiplication sign, though. How do you split that up? Multiplication, when you multiply, you add. So you would still split up 6 and x. Does that make sense, everybody? You're all good. Okay, so do these problems on the old worksheet. Ready, set, go. Check with me as you go. Okay, guys, so everybody's listening, taking notes, not talking. So back there, in the corner, I need to see you guys looking at me. Okay, all right, so 3-7 now is what we're moving on to. The whole reason we did 3-6 is so that we can do 3-7. So we're gonna be solving now exponential logs and then we're gonna finish up natural logs tomorrow. So we'll continue 3-7 tomorrow, but we're, we're gonna get it pretty much finished today. All right, so first of all, we're gonna solve exponential equations. So here are the steps to solve exponential equations. First of all, you have to isolate the exponential completely. So it's very similar to solving any other type of um, um, equation. It's just, it's different, but there's a lot of the same similarities here. Just like how we have to isolate a radical, we have to isolate the exponential completely, the base. So the base is the exponential part. Then second, we're gonna undo the base using the logarithm. We just, we were undoing um, logarithms and exponentials because they're inverses of each other. That's what we did yesterday. So second of all, once we've isolated the base, we'll undo the base using the logarithm. And then third, we're gonna algebraically then piece by piece solve for the variable. Um, and we're going to need the change of base formula that we learned yesterday as well. So um, these are the steps to solving an exponential. So if you need to take a picture of that, you can, if you don't wanna write it all down so that we can just move forward. It, I mean, if you can write fast enough, that's fine with me. But if you need to take a picture of it, that's fine. I'll give you a second. And then we'll just start practicing. So first example is number one on the worksheet. So it says solve the equation. So we're going to solve the equation. Um, and it says to start rewrite each base with the, I mean, rewrite each side with a common base. Okay. So we're going to solve the equation. So we have 125 raised to the 2x is equal to 25. So first of all, looking at this equation, notice it's exponential because we have a base raised to an exponent. So that's what makes it exponential. Okay. So the first step is to isolate the base. Nothing multiplied to it, nothing added to the base. Not in the power, I'm talking the base. So looking at this one, the base is isolated. You tell me what was my second step. Undo the base, very good. So we know we can undo base 125 by taking the inverse, which is the log of base 125. Now if you do that to the left, you've gotta do it to the right side of the equation. So we'll take log of the base 125 of both sides. All right, now we know that log to the base 125 and 125 are inverses, so they undo each other, thus they cancel out. So that leaves us with 2x on the left. Do we have questions on that piece? Now on the right, what we have is log to the base 125 of 25. Does everybody understand it up to there? All right, so now what we're gonna do is algebraically, piece by piece, solve for x. But actually, before I even do that, I'm gonna say, okay, well yesterday we learned how to evaluate this. We know how to evaluate log of the base 125 of 25. It was using the change of base formula. So, the change of base formula says, you can rewrite this as a base 10, so that we can use our calculator by taking log of the big size, so log of 25, divided by log of 125. Does everybody remember that from yesterday? Okay. So from there, from there, right now, what we have is 2x is equal to that. Does everybody understand how I just rewrote this using the change of base formula? We're all good. Now, algebraically solve for x piece by piece. 
How do I get x alone? Good, by both sides by 2. So this entire side by 2. So then now x is all by itself, right? Yeah. Okay, awesome. We've solved for x. So now you'll type it in your calculator. You'll do log of 25 divided by log of 125. Hit enter, divide it by 2, and there's your answer. So x is equal to 1 third. That was easy. Awesome. All right. Now, once again, you can check your answers, guys. Plug in one third into your original problem. You would do 125 raised to the 2 times one third. Now, if you're checking your answer, you have to type in the exact answer. So you couldn't type in a, a rounded decimal. And does that equal 25? Check it on your calculator. Yep. Yes or no? Yeah, it does. Okay, that's good news. We did it right then. All right, let's do another one. Problem number two. Here we go. Problem number two. Paying close attention. So it says solve the equation. The first thing we have to do is isolate the base. The base is isolated in number two as well. So now we can just proceed to undo the base. Well, we know that this is an exponential. Lots of exponentials are inverses. So we're going to take the inverse of base two, which is log to the base two. So log to the base 2, but if you do that to the left, you must do that to the right. So now on the left, log to the base 2 and base 2 cancel out. They're inverses. That's what inverses do. So we have 3x minus 3 on the left is equal to log to the base 2 of 64. We're all okay, right? Now we need to rewrite this. Our calculator can't do that. We need to rewrite it using the change of base formula. So really what we have on the right is log of the base, nope, sorry, log of, log of the base 10, technically, log of 64 over log of 2. Is everybody okay with that? So we have 3x minus 3 is equal to this. So now piece by piece, Let's solve for x. Now what do I do? Subtract. Subtract? Good. Add. We'll make sure that we add 3 to both sides of the equation. Now guys, check it. Yep, that adds up to be 0. We did this correctly. So we have 3x is equal to log of 64 over log of 2 plus 3. And then, what would we do to get x along last step? Good. Divide both sides of the equation by 3. So that's what we have. x is equal to all of that. So you'll type it in your calculator. Make sure you put parentheses around that. Calculate it. Log of 64 divided by log of 2. Hit enter. Plus 3. Hit enter. Divide by 3. Hit enter. Does that make sense of how to type it incorrectly? It's important we type it incorrectly. Do you all understand? Do it. You tell me what the answer is. Practice typing it in. You have no idea if you know how to type it incorrectly when you just watch your neighbor do it. So we got a 10.6. So we got a 10.6. Let's see if we get any other. Three. So you got a three. Any other answer besides three and 10.6? Seven? Somebody got a seven. Okay, the right answer is three. Oh, sweet geez. So, so we must have typed something in wrong. So um, if you need help typing it in your calculator, make sure you get me. Is everybody okay to try it by yourself? I'm not that much of a return. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Do you know that song? Or are you guys too young? Okay. All right. Two problems, one through nine. Now, careful on number six. The problem is to not forget the first step. All right. So on number six, what we have is seven raised to the three x minus twenty four is equal to 184. So a lot of you took my warning, but then you made an error. So looking at this one, first of all, we have to isolate the, the base, the exponential. So you add 24 to both sides. Okay, so what we have is 7 raised to the 3x is equal to 184 plus 24 is what? 208. Does everybody understand that? We have not taken the log yet. Does everybody understand how we did that? And we haven't taken the log yet. Yeah? Okay. 
Now, now we would undo the, the base by taking log of the base 7 of both sides. Leaving us with 3x is equal to log of the base 7 of 208. And then from there, you know how to simplify. Does everybody see the difference between this one and some of the others we've done? Thanks, Cole. You've always got my back. All right. Number seven with me. Most of you have that answer, so let's look. If you go to your y equals key and we want to solve by graphing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to type into y1. We're going to type into y1 3 raised to the 6x. And if your calculator doesn't go up into the exponent, make sure you use parentheses. So 3 raised to the 6x. Now in y2, we want to know when is that function equal to 2,000. So 2, 1, 2, 3. So this is another way to check your answers, guys. On this test coming up, you're going to want to check. So now <clears throat> I hit graph. Um, but first of all, my window at least has to be up to 2,000 if I want to truly see where these things intersect, right? Because where they're equal is where they intersect. But really, if I hit graph, I don't even need to see where they intersect. I know they're going to. Right? So now I could do, I don't even want to care. It's clear up here somewhere that they're intersecting. But your calculator can see it. So I'm going to do second trace. Well, we might have to change our window. We'll see. So I'm going to do second trace, and I'm going to find out where these intersect. I hit enter. Oops, oops. Scroll down too many times. Oh, yeah, yay. Okay, enter. All right, so first curve, it's on the exponential. I hit enter. Second curve, it's on the line at 2,000. I hit enter. It says, do you want me to guess? Yes, hit enter again. And looky there, same answer that you got algebraically. Wow. Wow. How many of you would prefer a calculator and not even have to use your brain? Look at you. You guys are all algebra junkies like me now. All right, continue. <clears throat> so looking at this one. We're going to solve and round to four decimal places. This is no different than what we just did. First things first is isolate the base. So we'd add one to both sides. So we would have five raised to the p plus one is equal to 68. Then we could either use our calculator or algebraically solve. I'm just going to go for it algebraically. So I take the log of base five of both sides to undo base five. So then base cancels out with the log of base 5, leaving us with p plus 1, which is equal to, on this side I need to use the change of base formula, so I'm going to have log of 68 over log of 5. Is everybody okay with me skipping a little bit of a step there? Are we all feeling okay? You're sure? Okay. Then from there, I would then subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. So p is equal to that. So I'll type that into my calculator, and you get, was this number what, three? Yeah, I get you get 1.6217. Everybody okay with that? And we can check it by plugging in the full decimal back into the original problem. All right, and then do one through five. Now be careful on number five, because the first thing you would need to do is isolate the base. So we would need to divide both sides by what? Three. Very good. Continue. Go, go, go. So we can move on. Everybody listening. Okay? So now we're going to solve some log equations. Here are the steps. I cannot wait for you to write them down. If you need a picture, take a picture. So first of all, the first thing we're going to do is use properties of logs to have one log on each side of the equation. Second, then we must undo the log by applying the inverse operation, which means taking the base of both sides. Logs and in, in, um, exponentials are inverses of each other. And third, then algebraically, we'll solve for the variable piece by piece. Okay, so we're going to now solve some logs. So really pay attention here. This is really the important part. And you guys, there, there will, there's a really good chance you'll run into something like these on the ACT. You will run into them on my tests and end of levels, but there's a good chance you'll run into it on ACT as well. Do we all have a picture of it? We all good? Okay. All right, here we go. First example, number six. Everybody, here we go. We have log of the base 9 of 5x squared minus log of the base 9 of 5 is equal to log of the base 9 of 64. The first thing we must do is combine the logs so we only have one log on each side of the equation. So looking at this side, we know how to combine logarithms using properties of logs. 
This is going to be log of the base 9 of 5x squared. And since it's subtract, we'll have divided by 5. Does everybody understand how I combine the left? Properties of logs. No questions? Subtract, so you divide 5. We're all okay? Some of you are kind of like, so I can't tell. Yes or no? Okay. So it's equal to log to the base 9 of 64. Does everybody see how we have one log, one log? Yeah? Now we need to undo the log. We need to undo the log. So we're going to take the base 9 of this side. If you do that to this side, you've got to do it to this side, right? Well, look at that. Log to the base 9 and base 9 cancel out. And look over here on the left. Base 9 and log to the base 9 cancel out. So all we're left with is 5x squared over 5 is equal to 64. No logs. Okay? Well, we have to solve for x. So now algebraically, we'll solve for x. So you tell me what's my first step. Multiply both sides by... Multiply both sides by 5. So it divides out, right? So we have 5x squared is equal to 64 times 5. I did 320. Then we'll divide both sides by 5. Okay, so we could have done this a little bit easier way, but oh well. So we have x squared is equal to 320 divided by 5 is 64. Is everybody following? Then solving for x, square root of both sides, and what do we not? So everybody, close attention. Root cancel out the power. x is equal to, what do we not forget in front? Good. Plus or minus. Good. Plus or minus the square root of 64. So x is equal to plus or minus. There's our answer. We solved the logarithmic equation. Questions? <laughs> You're right. Thank you. All right. Let's do number 13. Everybody stay with me here. Log to the base 3 of x plus log to the base 3 of x plus 2 is equal to 1. First things first. First things first is we're going to combine it so we only have one log on each side of the equation. This side does not have a log. That's okay. Pay close attention to this one, everybody. So on the left, we can't simplify this. This is going to be log to the base 3 of x times because of plus, right? When you multiply, you add. When you add, you multiply. So x times x plus 2. Does everybody see how I did that? Is equal to 1. Are we all following me? You're focusing because this one's going to be, you're, you're going to get it wrong if you're not focusing on this problem. Okay? Then how do we do log to the base 3? How do we undo log to the base 3? Base 3 of both sides of the equation. So on the left, base 3 and log to the base 3 are gone. So we have x times x plus 2 is equal to, on the right, did that go away? No. We have 3 to the first power. So what we have is x times x plus 2 is equal to 3, right? 3 to the first power is 3. Are we all following? Now looking at this, we've got to solve for x. Well, bad news is, not that bad news, this is quadratic. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. So we have x squared plus 2x is equal to 3. It is quadratic. It's not missing the x, so we must solve by factoring or the quadratic formula. But guess what? We are good at factoring. We learned quick, quick factoring. So from now on, it's not that hard. But Cole, we're going to have some advanced problems in this class. This is one of them, okay? All right. All right, so let's keep going. What's the first rule? It must be in standard form. It must be set equal to 0. So x squared plus 2x, and then we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, right? Minus 3 is equal to 0. Are we all following me? So then we do. What multiplies to be a times c, so what multiplies to be negative 3 and adds up to be 2, right? Guys, focus. You're going to have things like this in this class. That's just, this is secondary 3. It's advanced. Are you focusing? So 1 times 3 is... Three. What, how can we need to add it to be positive two? Negative one. Negative one. Oh, the good news is, can we quick factor? So it's going to factor to be x minus one times x plus one plus three, plus three. is equal to zero. Then our zero product property rule says we can set each of those factors equal to zero. So x minus one is equal to zero. X plus three is equal to zero. And then solve for x in each case. 
add 1, x is equal to 1, subtract 3, x is equal to negative 3. So guys, this is seriously, notice how there was like, it's testing your knowledge in all these different areas. On an ACT, this is what they would do. Because then, really, this is quite an advanced problem. You have to know how to combine properties of logs. Then you have to know how to undo logs. Then you have to know how to factor. Does that make sense? Yeah? OK, awesome. OK, do problems. Do problems from? OK, so all of first page is due. All of the front and back is due. All of the front of the second page is due. Basically, the back is not due except for thir these 12 and 13. Everything's due up to there. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Don't do number eight. We're going to learn natural logs tomorrow. So the only one not to do is number eight. And then the back besides 12 and 13. That's what is expected of you to be done tomorrow. Do you all understand? Awesome. Continue. Work. If you don't practice those, I can't know if you get it. Sorry, I, I kind of, I, I had two more examples, but I was like, and they can do it. But it was, wasn't a smart idea on my part. Looking at number 23, log of x minus log of 4 is equal to 3. Before we can solve, everybody listen, before we can solve, we have to combine this into one log using properties of logs. So we have log of x, and because it's subtract, it's going to be what? Divide 4. A lot of you are going x minus 4. No, when you divide, you subtract. When you subtract, you divide. So it's equal to 3. Does everybody follow me? Yeah. Very important, you first combine your logs using properties of logs. To undo a log to the base, oh, what's the base? 10. Good. So what's the base that we're going to apply to both sides? 10. Does everybody see that? OK, so then base 10 and log to the base 10 cancel out. We have x over 4 is equal to 10 to the third, right? x over 4 is equal to 10 to the third is? A thousand. Then to solve for x, we multiply both sides by four. X is equal to four thousand. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, maybe. Do you want to see another one? Freaking A. <laughs> Number 26. If my smart board will work, why do you quit on me now? Okay. Okay, number 26. Guys, everybody needs to be listening quickly. We have 2 log of 3x minus log of 9 is equal to 1. First things first, we have to fix that exponent, right? Anything being multiplied is an exponent. So we have log of 3 and x raised to the second power. In parentheses. Minus log of 9 is equal to 1. Then we'll use properties of logs to pull this together. So we have log of 3x all squared, right? All over, divided by 9. When you subtract, you divide, and that's equal to 1. Then to undo log, well, it's base 10. If we want to write the little 10 in there, we can. Because it goes without being said, if it's not written, that it's a 10. So we apply base 10 to both sides. Log to base 10 and base 10 cancel out. So then we have 3x squared over 9 is equal to 10 to the first, which is 10, right? Is everybody following me? Yep. So I'm going to come up here so I don't have to scroll down. So we have 3x all squared is equal to 10. So then we would, to solve, we would multiply both sides by 9. We would have 90. So then over here on the left, we technically have 9x squared, right? 9, 3 squared x squared, right? 3x squared is 9x squared. 3x squared is, 3 squared is 9, x squared is x squared. That's equal to 90, divide both sides by 9, right? 10 square rooted. Okay guys, thank you. You guys did awesome today.